speech recognition advancement in healthcare and its future the speaker for the session is mr rustam lawyer co-founder and ceo ognito uh, rustam has been an entrepreneur since a very young age in 2001 along with shiraz austin uh, rustam lawyer founded scribe tech which became the first medical transcription bpo targeting the public center uh, public sector nhs in the uk in 2017 rustam with his team went into another entrepreneurial journey to form ognito india's first clinical speech recognition solution to enhance physicians productivity and enable them to provide better patient care uh, i welcome you and i hand over the session to the chair Uh, thank you thank you so much uh, this is a very very interesting and apt session you know i think uh, speech recognition we all uh, have been not none of us have been untouched by it so far right so i think if you go back to the history of speech recognition uh, you know it basically started in the 50s when bell labs came out with this system called uh, audrey and the audrey was essentially able to recognize only nine uh digits 1 to 9 and they were targeting basically the operators the trunk operators to sort of speed up their you know efficiency there right but it did it with 90% accuracy just the nine digits 90% accuracy and you know the size of the machine it filled an entire room so i think since then there were a lot of you know interesting work which been happening so many years right we have seen you know a lot of small investments coming in and then of course in the 90s you know we were sort of the eyes were raised when you know the i'm i'm sure you know many of you would remember the dragon dictate had come where you could do a dictation right and again in 97 they sort of uh, called it that hey we'll make it more uh, more natural so without any uh, we, you can we can understand speeches with pauses and everything right but the real thing which came in which sort of uh, you know transformed everything was 9 2010 right as late as 2010 when google came out with the google assistant right and then over 2011 uh, apple followed with siri and what changed i think the two factors which changed uh, and transformed the whole speech recognition ecosystem right one is the compute availability the compute became cheaper compute became omnipresent and stuff i still remember i was doing my research on neural networks in the, my masters in 1990s and i was working on this artificial neural networks and the machine i had i could only give a 5 by 5 cross 5 cross 5 matrix for it to recognize characters now just 25 bit of information right but now we're talking about millions and millions of you know you know nodes and millions and millions of weights which can be assigned and everything so that gave rise to deep neural network architecture so that's one change which happened and more importantly second change which happened is the data so the access to data the massive data availability of various uh, you know uh, uh, types of speeches various accents and so on allows us to train and get more accuracy in that space so you know obviously this is the exciting times for us and i think when you we, we heard about the emr uh, you know you know in a session as well that how important emr is not just from a individual patient you know care and stuff but also from aggregated data which can create you know a precision and 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 and, and prescriptive medi- medication and so on so the data whole whole idea about data and transforming into a lot of ai models which allow us to do you know better better treatments and so on right so the the emr piece of course in the more we say the more there it is but the, it's been the key problem is adoption so and that's where i think one of the biggest applications of speech recognition could be that if it could be adopted with high accuracy and trained in for the medical domain to really do you know you know doctors prescriptions doc transcriptions extend that to transcriptions by the by by the diagnostics you know you know people and you extend that further you know we, you know where where it could be used by the patients for patient engagement for chronic diseases you know you know use it by the patients for post discharge sort of a care and so on and so on so the possibilities are immense and you know many fold and uh, without further ado i want to hand it over to the expert you know hear from rustam in terms of you know some interesting what they are doing and and learn from him in terms of what's going on what he expects the future to be uh, over to you uh, rustam Thank you very much, uh, Anurag, uh, for the intro. And uh, I can tell you, you're pretty sort of passionate about uh, you know understanding the field as well. I think so. Um, you know, great pleasure to be speaking at Kaho Tech today, and good evening to everyone. Um, really looking forward to actually talking about this very exciting and uh, sort of emerging field of voice artificial intelligence, and. Uh, you know the way we like to really look at it is the buoy which is the voice user interface and why this is becoming you know the next leap in healthcare according to us 
So I'm really going to take you through uh, three use cases, um, you know, clinical speech recognition or medical voice assistant and voice diagnostics. So firstly, uh, you know, why do we need clinical speech recognition, right? Um, you know, as we had said, um, you know, in, in the sort of adoption of EMR, one of the biggest sort of uh, pain points really is that, you know, doctors spend maybe 40% of their time, you know, trying to actually fill up these type of systems. You know, I mean, there's studies in America and stuff saying three hours, three and a half hours a day is going on this, right? And, uh, you know, I think, you know, if we're going to be sort of getting into, you know, uh, proper EMR adoption across India, right? I think it's very, very important to try and, you know, get these type of technologies integrated right at the beginning, you know, uh, to boost, to boost your efficiency, you know, by, uh, you know, four to five X really. Um, and this is really across the continuum of care. Um, you know, you can actually integrate it into all these sort of specialities. And I'm, we're going to talk about that a little bit, uh, later on in the presentation. Um, but I think another very, very important point is, again, you know, the studies by John Hopkins that about 250,000 uh, people die every year because of clinical error, right? And, uh, you know, I think Dr. Kedar was saying 60% of medication errors happen because of uh, handwriting, right? So, you know, that's bound to be a very big number um, here as well. And uh, we believe in a, you know, that you know if you actually try and improve documentation this is actually going to improve communication between doctors and uh, you know this is going to reduce uh, you know these type of errors you know quite substantially so you know that's why i believe it's a very strong use case and should uh, you know start getting integrated into the emr landscape um another very interesting area is the sort of future facing uh, you know area of a medical voice assistant. So, um, you know, you can think of it a little bit like an Alexa, but I think it's a lot more sort of sophisticated uh, and very focused in this, uh, you know, in this area. So you could imagine that uh, a doctor patient uh, conversation happening and you're able to actually pick out, uh, you know, the relevant information from that uh, conversation and actually update structured information into an EMR, right? And what is this going to achieve, right? This is simply going to achieve, you know, the ability to focus on the patient, right? To have that eye-to-eye -eye contact, right? And instead of being looking at a screen, which today, you know, uh, when you have an EMR, a lot of that happens. Um, obviously, it will reduce fatigue. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, all this is going to improve your structured information uh, and better analytics as well. So. Um, you know, I'll take you on to another very interesting area, which is the area of voice diagnostics, um, or, you know, you can talk about the area of uh, voice biomarkers. So actually a voice biomarker is really a technique to detect uh, disease by using speech uh, or understanding speech characteristics, right? Um, I'll give you a little story, like, for example, if you're away on a, on a work trip and, you know, you speak to your mother or you speak to your wife, Within a few seconds, they're going to be able to tell you that, you know, you're tired or you're stressed. That is simply a voice biomarker. And I think, you know, our deep learning technologies are becoming very, very good at this. And um, there's a lot of papers really, uh, you know, that are showing uh, very promising results for, you know, early detection of Alzheimer's disease, pulmonary disease, uh, you know, and, you know, there's an emerging area in mental health as well. Right. So you could imagine that someone who's depressed or someone who's schizophrenic, you know, the tone of their voice, the speed of their voice, all these characteristics, uh, you know, can be actually looked at and give extremely good results. And another very interesting area is, you know, in actual COVID detection. And there's several, you know, papers that have come out um, all over the world, which are showing very good results in being able to actually detect if a person is COVID positive. So that's pretty amazing actually as a tool, uh, you know, to diagnose things. So I'm going to sort of take you down to uh, what Ognito really uh, focuses on, which is the speech recognition to really drive your EMR adoption. All right. So, you know, it's very clear that it's four times faster than typing. Right. And you can imagine the type of efficiency gain that can give. Right. Another amazing thing is that, you know, if you 
dictate the word, you know, you're going to have absolutely zero spelling mistakes. So that completely removes that area. Um, and, you know, we've done studies here at Ognito, uh, you know, with some of the largest, uh, you know, sort of healthcare organizations. And if this is actually uh, put through the proper continuum of care, and it's actually put into all the uh, clinical applications, you can boost efficiency so much that you can actually add something like 20 crores to the bottom line. And that's some of the modeling that we've seen. And, you know, at the end of the day, you know, you can get much better and more accurate uh, patient reports. So I actually wanted to um, take you through a small video, you know, which actually shows, you know, how our speech recognition engine, you know, which has actually been developed over nearly eight years uh, working with, uh, you know, professors from MIT, Sheffield University, IIT Bombay, you know, to develop a, an engine that can really work across specialities. I think most people, uh, you know, consider speech recognition in the radiology sector, right? But I want to show you the other specialities, um, you know, where we are actually uh, creating a lot of efficiency. So I will just put that on. Cardiology assessment report, header last line, new paragraph, the patient had initial echocardiogram that demonstrated impaired left ventricular function with an estimated ejection fraction between 40% and 50% comma, with evidence of fluid overload that responded to low dose frusimide full stop. Pre-discharge comma, she had further echocardiography which demonstrated an ejection fraction of 50% comma, with more dynamic systolic function at recovery, comma, suggesting a degree of impairment related to COVID-19, full stop. Home, comma, the patient is gradually improving in fitness, full stop. She has really had to start from the beginning, comma, both in terms of mobilization and her exercise capacity, is gradually improving, comma, although she is still short of breath, full stop. General surgery report, header last line. New paragraph, the patient's endoscopy in October 2019 demonstrated a four centimeter hiatus hernia and grade one esophagitis in the lower esophagus with moderate erosive gastritis in the stomach full stop. More recently in June this year, comma, she underwent esophageal motility and TF studies full stop. The conclusion of report identified normal esophageal motility with 1-2 cm hiatus hernia, comma, normal exposure to acid reflux full stop. Specifically, comma, there was an acid exposure time of 6.1% in the upright position and 0% in supine position, giving a normal total acid exposure of 2.3% full stop. So I'll probably stop there. I mean, uh, you know, I had another a report, which is the oncology assessment as well, but really wanted to show that, you know, today it's a very, very advanced system. You know, you can see that all the sort of detailing that is required in a report is there and you can do a complex report, you know, in less than you know, under, under a minute. So you can imagine the type of efficiency gains that this type of technology can give, uh, you know, across specialities really. Um, so really want to sort of end this, uh, you know, uh, talk really by saying that, you know, it's been sort of 18 months since we launched Ognito uh, into the Indian uh, market. We actually have 87 enterprise customers already. Um, and I believe that, uh, you know, we're just getting started. And, uh, you know, it's actually a great tool to push EMR adoption and really, um, as a, as a tool that can work very, very closely, um, you know, with these companies as well. So um, thank you very much and really appreciate uh, the time and hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rustam. I think uh, very exciting presentation, exciting days ahead, I guess, uh, the speech recognition aspect. And I'm pretty fascinated by what you mentioned about the the voice biomarkers, that's that's very impressive. <laughs> if that works, it'll be very impressive. Great.